Hey friends, what would you say if I said that there was a tool on the market right now where you could measure your own chassis for a couple hundred bucks? There are $20,000 tools out there that you can go find a shop that can measure the service, charge hundreds of dollars to find out whether the front's bent, the rear's bent, how perfect it is. I'm gonna show you in this video a tool that you can buy for yourself, whether you're a shop, a do-it-yourself, or flipping bikes, whatever. I'm gonna show you a tool for 250 bucks. We're gonna have a 10% off discount uh, from PropTech on this as well to Hot Wrench fans, but you are going to literally be able to measure your own chassis, whether it's bent front or rear, twist, whatnot. I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be a multi-part series. You gotta check this out. Let's get to it. Hey fans, you've seen it before. One of the reasons join and subscribe to the Hotter Wrench channel, PropTech is doing it again. Just like their other uh, tool videos we did on the introduction of this, they're doing a 10% off coupon. You'll find the discount link below. Hit them up on uh, these uh, links and get one of these tools for yourself. Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're gonna be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. This video includes timestamps, so check out the description below if you wanna bounce ahead and just grab the info that you want. All right, friends, as promised, we are here at PropTech with uh, the owner, the inventor, the genius here, uh, Chava. But uh, I, I, I wanna point this out because fans of the channel would really recognize the, the videos we did on both these tools. Let's go ahead and open these up here. And uh, this one, when we did the video for you, the you know our, our fans and and shops were like no way i can't believe because not only did we do um uh, carb sync but uh there's there's a lot of other data that we can you know take from that right yeah. and then the other the other thing that people were thought was really rad is where we took the uh current uh the current tester here and we showed how you could do relative compression through that tool. So those were some pretty popular videos. I'm gonna put links below to, to both of those. If you haven't seen those videos, they were super rad. What was really wild about you know your products is the fact that you could plug it in your computer, you know, have a printout for the customer, do all that you know data recording and have that history as well. So but we're not here for that, are we? Yes. We're here to be schooled <laughs> and to learn about what's in that bag. Should we go to the shop and take a look? Okay. So I can guess you're already prepared and set up for us here. So, so tell us about this. So this is a smartest motorcycle frame measurement tool. Uh, it's very simple and very easy to use. So we will demonstrate for you how to measure a motorcycle frame within 10 minutes. Within 10 minutes, yeah. Sure. My video might be longer because I'm going to be asking questions, <laughs> but we get the idea. But here's what we're going to do. Um, I, I've been working with uh, Chava here for, for quite some time, a couple of years now. Yeah, yes. it's crazy. It's been that long. But there's we're going to really make this an educational video and really show like the, the real benefits of what you can gain from this. So real quickly, what you can do with this is you're able to uh, take some measurement points and determine if there's twist in the frame. So you measure the overall motorcycle between the center line uh, to the front and rear axles, and then you can take this attachment as well and see if there's twist in the neck or whether it's a bent fork or so on, all in 10 minutes. So why, uh, while Chaba's setting this up, I was thinking about like, who is this tool for? And so we happen to have some sport bikes in here that we're looking at, but this is for, you know, all motorcycles. You were talking, you could do it scooters, you could do it anything that you can install this in. But if you are a shop doing uh, repair services and you don't, you know, want to take that risk to where you throw a bunch of parts at things. I'm going to tell a story later in the video where I lost my butt on a bike that I put all the, you know, new front end, all this stuff on it and ended up having a bad frame. And, you know, back in 2000, I had no way of measuring it. But let me tell that story later in the, in the episode here. But uh, if you're offering those services, that'd be a really nice way to prevent like thousands of dollars spent and then find out that bike won't run down the road straight. But uh, let's say you're do it yourself or and you're uh, just want you, you know, wrecked your bike or you want to buy a used bike and you want a way to check that out. This is a great tool for you as well. And then thirdly, uh, just thinking about all the people out there that are flipping motorcycles and really going to uh, looking at making some money on this stuff. This would save you a lot of problems uh, for, you know, purchasing the motorcycle correctly. Now, that doesn't mean you might not buy it for parts, but it might help you to get it to a parts price versus a whole motorcycle 
vehicle by being able to show even the seller like, hey, this thing's bent, you know, it's got a problem. Uh, or you can just walk away and, and not waste your money. So we're gonna start now with like the base test of the whole uh, whole motorcycle. So let's uh, let's get to it and show us how to do this. So as he's unpacking this, I'm going to kind of talk through some of this because I did get to use this in my shop and <clears throat> excuse me, started playing around with this. But it's got these uh, these rods that are going to go through the uh, axle point, the swing arm point. And, and what he's got set up here are some different accessories that we can actually take like the nut off if needed. So say this was a solid bolt and we couldn't get through. So you could take this nut off and there's these different adapters we could thread through here so that we can gain that access. We could see that one's hollow. So he went right on through. Okay. Just before. If you end up using one of these threaded, um, threaded adapters here, what it comes with is these shafts you put in here and then just tighten down with the thumb screw. Kind of want to show that while he's doing that other one. So now you get an idea of how you'd end up installing that uh, by just threading that on there. Super cool. Really thought of. Really thought about a lot of things. We got metric, and then even for our Harley guys out there, we got some standards as well, like a whole bunch of different metric size adapters. And yet another accessory. What do we got here? So M M14. Okay. And sometimes there is no chance to fit it on the bike because of in case of scooters, there is uh, no any end of the shafts. So in that case, you are a little bit turn it on, or mm -hmm. make correction of the surface by vice, and then you are able to fit it. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. So then you put your extension piece out, grab that. Yes, yes. So just to, just be clear, you'd have to have a really good surface to you know mount that on. Well, that's a strong magnet. Wow. So if you didn't even have a hole, then you and you didn't have threads, and you're just going off the surface. There you go. Wow, that's super rad. Here's a quick little shot of what it would look like with the attachment on it. Another accessory this comes with is that sometime you end up with a uh you know an axle it doesn't have a big enough hole where you can get through one side but you get to the end and it like just stops so you can see the end of these rods are threaded go ahead and put that accessory in there in that case we have push and we fix the measurement here okay okay that's all Quick note here, we just stuck that in there just to show you that other accessory, but you you can install this kit from either side of the motorcycle, just as long as they're all on the same side. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and show you uh, one of these shafts installed on these cones. And really, regardless of what we're doing, is we got to have a good surface. We talked about that earlier, but you can see this blue cone right here. It needs to be in a uh, concentric hole. If it has road rash or damage on there, it's going to be a problem. So just kind of skipping ahead here, you can see on the left here the photo of the two shafts and how we're going to shoot a laser across there. That's just to give you some perspective right now for what Chaba's going to uh, you know, inform us on what we need to do and inspect on where we install these cones into uh, any of the surfaces that we're using. Yep. We have to control the end of the, the axles because of in case of damage, we are not making easy or uh, correct measurements. So if you crash this one, in that case, the road will be not in the center. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do, uh, why don't you check out this little video real quick of him uh, putting a file across this and cleaning up some road rash. Cause you know, for, for a lot of people when they're gonna use this tool would be after an accident, especially like a shop, for example, that wanted to sell services you know, to their customers to check for, you know, frame damage after a, after a wreck, it's gonna be really important. And yet another accessory. So you're gonna run into some applications where the small cones just aren't enough and you have a pretty large hole. What bike were you talking about? You gave an example. BMW, Ducati, Triumph. Yep. So in that case, you cannot fix the measurement rolls because of the hole, it's too big. Yeah, so, then so you're making big. these big cones to go through, yep. And you can make it on the position. All right, show us how you're gonna actually uh, put the cones on to lock it down. So this is a conical here. And we have to get a bit tight. 
and push it to make it fixed. Okay? Got it. If you're a fan of the channel, you've heard me say time and time again when using diagnostic tools that it's so important they use them uh, correct so that you get accurate results. Let's kind of review why this would go uh, wrong if you uh, didn't set this up correctly to begin with. If that were damaged in there, that wouldn't hold that concentric and then it's giving you bad data for the rest of, uh, rest of the test. So super well thought out. So we are facing the first problem, but not really problem, but we have to remove this bolt. Yep. to get the possibility to push through okay. the rods, okay? okay? So I take some wrench here. Okay. All right, so now that we got our three rods in and secure on undamaged uh, axles, you're gonna go ahead and start with the laser in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And we have a mirror on the back of the... Oh, wow, this is cool. So you made it into one tool. So this is the one that's going to tell us the angle. But it, for setup purposes, uh, it's got the mirror on the back and the magnets. That's cool. Right. <clears throat> All right, let's just talk this through real quick. So what we're doing is we're, we're checking and verifying that the two rods are parallel to each other. So uh, we can't adjust the center one. So that's our stationary one. And what we're doing is we're setting that reflection, that laser beam shoots off the center, hits the mirror and reflects back to itself on the scale. And what we're doing is getting that centered. So if we have to slide these out to the outside of the foot peg because it's in the way or there's an obstruction like a frame slider or something, all you gotta do is move those to the, anywhere on that shaft and we're just making sure they're parallel. So what you're gonna see here is if they're not parallel, that's where we'll adjust the, the rear wheel just as if we were adjusting the chain to get that laser dead set in the middle. And then what you're going to see is if you cannot get that uh, parallel for any reason, that's where it starts to tell you something's wrong, that something's bent. But let, let's uh, let's go ahead and see this in, uh, in action. It's important to get it absolutely parallel. Okay. So if you couldn't, would that, that automatically tell you that something's wrong? Because if you had to like be off a couple marks here. Yes, but it's different from the factory because of right. this, this, it, 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 is a, it is the welted parts. Right, right. So the spacers may be a little bit uh, incorrect. Yeah. And if you are using only this one, you maybe have the, the misalight reveal. If you, if you see the racers, all of racers have some data on the top of the swing arm. Mm -hmm. So this is for the perfect adjustment. So, so they know how much to, you know, offset it a little yes. bit from production tolerances. Yes. <laughs> Just thinking of some other uses for the everyday shop or the do-it-yourselfer. Because this is, this is being priced to the point that someone right out of their garage could afford. So with... If you started to see something like really off nominal, where I, when I do my chain adjustments, I use the laser and go down the you know down the chain. That's the way I've done it. Yes. But if you if you get this, you know where that that line is dead middle of the mirror, uh, the middle of that laser of the, of that scale, mm -hmm. and you were looking at your chain and sprockets and seeing they're crooked, you'd already know like at this point like something's bent. Prop Tech actually had a video made showing how you could uh, use this tool. To, uh, to do your laser alignment and then create that label that you can put on your swing arm so that in the future you'd always know uh, how much to offset that. So you could uh, rewatch this a few times, figure it out, but pretty rad. When I was doing my remote training with Chaba, this was the hardest thing for me to understand is, you know, how can you move these all along these axes and, and know that it's parallel? So once I was uh, at their headquarters, he showed me his calibration tool to show how these lasers are calibrated to the scale. I got a cool video of it. Let's check it out. You can see his calibration tool where he sets it up on here, puts the laser, puts the scale. And so don't mess with these. Okay. If you did, if you, you know, loosened it or caused a problem, you would need to send it uh, back in for calibration. But this is how you're uh, making it good to go. You can see he actually has a, a mirror on here on this side. He's going to go ahead and, uh, you know, just show quickly how, you know, he's, he's making sure that it has the ability. I saw it on there. Okay, so we have to ride back to the uh, emitting point. Yep, awesome. Way cool, way cool. So then, the next important point <clears throat> for the measurement position, 
we have to adjust the handlebar into the center because if it doesn't on the center there will be uh, take move to the left and the right yep okay So what you can't see me doing here because I'm filming and adjusting the handlebars at the same time is I'm just tapping the handlebars until that laser lines up right in the middle of the scale. And if you're working alone it's better to tap the handlebar like that than to aggressively grab that rod all the way out there. It's just better to tap it into place than, uh, than yank on that rod. And then. So what we've done right now is we've just we made it. We are in the measuring position. Yep. We're at the point of now being able to go to the, the next tool. So we just have to switch on the measurement mm -hmm. and make it to zero. Okay. Okay. Then we are fitting in the same position to the real thing now. This is the difference. Yep. And you said well, uh, even the in the manual. The maximum back. In 0 0.4 degrees, 0 0.4. 0 0.4 in the back. At the back and the front, 0 0.3. Oh, this is oh, exactly. zero, yeah, wow. Okay. That means the spike's looking pretty good. Yes, so we got the breeze up. And, and that's, that's literally it. So you have, uh, one more time on the front, what's the max on the front? 0.3. 0 0.3. So because of the 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 the, the, uh, the length mm -hmm. of the point, it's uh, much wider than the length of point of this one. <coughs> oh, you sure. Yeah. If you have a small difference, yep. can cause can cause a little bit uh, wider at the, at the top. That that at makes point. that makes complete sense. So. So at this point, if you had more than 0.4, you'd be like, something's wrong. Okay, we either have a frame or we have a back, swing arm bent. It's yep. A swing arm. yep, it's something back there at that point from this, this point. And then on the front, uh, you would obviously know that something's wrong. But at least it gives you a point of diagnosis, like do I want to go here or do I want to go there? So if you were, if you were going to someone's... Uh, dealership or someone's garage to buy a used motorcycle and you threw this on there really quick and you had you know 0.8 <laughs> and you know 0.5 you probably not want to buy that motorcycle or you'd get it really 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 cheap knowing that you'd have to put some money into it <laughs> yeah and that's super cool so what what happens right now if how sensitive is this if you turn the handlebar and made it made it bad how much will that change the the anglometer on there well, that tiny little that tiny little bit of the handlebar that you just moved it pushed it out of spec. So that means it's it's measuring that accurately. Wow. I don't know if you could see that. Go ahead and move it. Go ahead and move the handlebar back and forth. You can see how. Yeah. That is. And if you look, so let, let's look right there. So we're at point five there. And if you look at this motorcycle, it, it doesn't look bad. Like that, you know, just eyeballing it, you're like, oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I don't know about you, but how many times in my life have I went up to buy a motorcycle and I climb on it, okay? I get up on here and I jump up on and I grab the handlebars. Like, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. I can't see. I definitely can't see that in the handlebars. But this tool will tell you, hey, something's going on here. I... I would say too, from what I'm learning about this too, that that base, the first measurement you get is really important, or that when you set the tool up is really important so you don't get bad data too. So the ways, let's think about how you could go, get it wrong. If you had damage in here yes. and the cone was uh, not being able to sit the way it is, that could give you bad data. If the, the, the front chain is not in the center position. Yep. And then, man, it's so cool to be able to, you know, perfectly set that up to get that straight. And that's awesome. Well, I don't think I don't think you were lying when you said 10 minutes to check a bike out. There was no joke. Tell me this, because this was a question I had was, where did you get the information of point 
zero point four on the back and zero point three. Like, where does that? It is the uh, uh, old expectation or under uh, or experience and the competitors using same. So from OEM, you know, numbers you've uh, heard. There is no meaning of the OEM uh, data, but if you see this Shavener tool, it is cost 20,000 US. Okay. Or if you see touch bike, which cost 60,000 sure. uh, found, they are using same feature. But yeah. This tool is 250 US. Wow, 250 US. So th that's where the number comes from, is from super, super high end, um, you know, uh, also, frame measuring if equipment. We have on the center, <clears throat> we are able to measure the wheelbase too. Oh yeah, you told me about that. So yeah, this is cool. Oop, right okay. there. Oop, right there. Okay. Got it. Oh yeah, and that comes in the kit, right? This tape measure comes in the kit, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's on the basic key. And that was really thought of, really well thought out. And uh, 1,408 or something like that. Okay. You can see in one row. And you said that there was a website you were going to share with me that had a whole bunch of uh, recorded wheelbases on it? On the service manual, there is a mention where to find data for motorcycles. Mm. For the wheelbases, and you are able to compare. It's uh, if shorter, there is a problem. If longer, it could be no problem because of under the using the chain get longer and longer, then we are adjusting the time. Sure, sure. So let's let me refresh that to make sure I understood you. So obviously, it's going to get longer because of the chain is going to stretch. Yeah, the, the, uh, the other thing we'd have to take into account that it had stock sprockets that somebody didn't do something yeah, there stock to shorten. Sprockets it. and the new chain. Yep. And uh, proper uh, chain lash. Tension. So Tension. To, to match that spec would be, because the spec is based on new parts. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes, at the factory. Yep. So if you had, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking right now, I hope my fans understand that I'm learning. I'm here and I'm learning, right? So the other thing I'm just thinking about is if the wheelbase is supposed to be, you know, we had roughly 141 there, just to just use the number. But if it were 138, and all of these parts are good and check out, that could be that the front is is bent in from a front end impact. Yes, but normally it's bent and that gets twisted also. Normally it's, it's very, bent and twisted. Very, 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 very hard to get, uh, to have it just perfectly bend straight back. Yes, yes. Nobody hit object exactly. All right, center. let me tell a little story time because this is, this is just like blowing my mind. This goes all the way back to 2000. I bought a ZX-9. Uh, and it was wrecked. Somebody went right into a curb and it bent the forks and it, it, it twisted the wheel so bad that the wheel shoved into the exhaust and bent the exhaust tubes. But, and it was a Kawasaki and you know about Kawasaki frames, how they would, you know, crack up here a lot, especially at the neck weld. Uh, anyway, not, there was no cracks. The paint didn't chip. I mean, nothing. There was you couldn't see anything. I mean, there was not a paint chip or anything. And that was what I was determining on buying the bike because at the racetrack, you'd ever, you know, every time you'd see someone wreck on a, a Kawasaki, the, the neck would break. Like you'd see a lot of welds that were breaking up here. So I was like, dang, you know, I'm not seeing the paint even chip or anything. So I buy the bike and I, uh, I throw a fully adjustable like ZX7 front end on it. And I, anyway, just, I, you know, getting used parts off eBay and this and that. And we rode it around with no, no lower fairings for a long time because I just didn't have them. Well, when I went to sell the bike, when I went to sell the bike, it was the first time that I thought, well, I better throw some fairings on there. And I went to put the lower fairings on and they, they wouldn't fit. The, the, I mean, the, the wheel was hitting and I'm like, I'm looking at it and I go, man, you know, I never noticed, but that tire is pretty close to the exhaust. And I just was like, what the heck? Well, we ended up measuring the wheelbase and it was like two, I think it was two millimeters shorter than the spec. And I'm telling you, that bike handled perfectly. I never noticed anything, but I just, uh, I ended up just parting the bike out because I didn't feel comfortable enough to sell it to a customer. But I tell, I, I'm not kidding you, my friends. Like the way when I would put the fairings on and couldn't get the fairings on, the tire was all the way inside here hitting because that front end was tucked in. And it was the craziest thing. With that being said and telling stories is kind of fun. This tool 
would have just stopped from uh, you know, putting all that money into that bike. Cause I, I, I put a front end on it and I put a wheel on it and I bought fairings and all that was wasted money because, uh, the frame was bent. So I, it, it, this tool would have saved me from purchasing that bike that just didn't have the value in fixing. So that's one thing I'm really excited about this. I think if here's another thing, if you're flipping motorcycles, this is the tool for you. If you're trying to make money and you're buying used bikes and flipping motorcycles, this is a great tool to stop you from uh, either wasting your money or you get the option that you're talking to the person selling it and you're showing them like, hey, you know, maybe this bike's only good for parts. Might be a way for you to get a really good deal by realizing that, you know, that's all the bike is really worth. But super cool. Well, what should we do next? Should we go and show them how to uh, check for the frame twist? Oh, we can do on that side. Okay. Have to that okay. okay. All right. And we can show how the other face is working well because of we cannot go through this uh, axle. Okay. okay. So why don't everybody here, just to shorten up this video, why don't you jump on part two? I'll have a link below in the video. All right. Okay.